Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Drinks with Johnny. Today, I'm, I am joined by a very fun, interesting, exciting guest, Willem, producer, guitarist, brother. Yep. <laughs> Kim Dracula, how are you doing today, man? Yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Oh man, I was trying to I was trying to remember if I hit all the beats on your titles. <laughs> and then I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that I try and help out with, <laughs> but I think you just about covered most of it. <laughs> all right, cool, cool, cool. So uh, Kim Dracula is out here on tour with us, my my band, Avenged Sevenfold. You've been out for the first leg yeah. and now the second leg. We're in Salt Lake City here today, and. Uh, it's got it's gonna be an amazing crowd out there so yeah I'm very pumped. really excited for it. it's big yeah. big show big show for us um, so talk to me about today and uh, how the tour's been going for you guys yeah I mean it's been like amazing dream come true um, it's yeah it's hard to put into words really like if you told me this it's cliche to say but if you told me this a few years ago this would be happening probably wouldn't believe you but I'm you know super grateful to be here um, every show is so in what much way fun. do you mean like with us specifically just, just like touring? everything just everything, yeah, everything. Okay. like even yeah band as high up as you guys and just touring in america as well like right. all that stuff Dude, yeah super so, exciting so i heard when you guys were coming out on the first leg the mm -hmm. rumor was that that was like your first show ever when we did that one in camden right yeah yeah um i went over there because i wanted to see i was like for, but i the way it was worded to me is i actually thought for a second like you had never played in front of an audience <laughs> ever in your yeah. music career. That would be wild if that was true. <laughs> I well, kind of yeah, wish it was big, true in some way. <laughs> it was a pretty big show for your first show yeah, ever. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, Kim, Kim and I both grew up playing in loads of different local bands. So, like, pretty experienced playing to audiences. But I think the – I want to guess probably the biggest I'd play to is maybe, like, around 800. Okay. Something like that. So, obviously, this – Am it's a little, a little different. It's a little pretty, different than anything. Pretty 800. big jump up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like I used to play all the time locally. So I've, I'm like pretty well versed playing live. But yeah, when, when I first heard about the tour, I was like, wow, this is going to be crazy. It's going to be very different. And yeah, it was a crazy feeling mm -hmm. first wo working, like walking out in Camden. Like it was, it was very surreal playing that set but it was like amazing it was, mm. went very quick because you just kind of zone you just get in the zone I'm sure you know what i mean like you, oh, yeah. you don't really think it's kind of like it's like a flow state almost yeah and you kind of have to get in that at least for yeah, me no, like, definitely. I, I think everyone's a little different but like yeah. at least for me i find the the times that i'll have like a flub or a mess up or a mistake mm -hmm. on, on the show is generally when i like am thinking about something yeah I have to be thinking about almost nothing. Yeah. For, and then I, I, I have like flawless shows. If I just like kind of go, like I'm not even here maybe. Yeah. And just like, maybe just pay attention to the crowd. I do like to interact with yeah, the crowd. Yeah, me too. I have, I have fun yeah, with that. Definitely. But, yeah, so I mean, I'm so glad you guys are, are out here. And, yeah, thank uh, you. I do, I do want to say that like, I heard like a couple of the singles that you guys had on social media before, mm -hmm. but it was like literally that day in Camden, uh, was the first time I heard your guys' new record that had just come out. Sick. So it was like it was. I was like, wait, there's debut album. They've never really toured before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially in the states, and this yeah. is going to be the first thing. I was like, I gotta, I gotta meet these guys and talk to them. And then we started talking a little bit a yeah. few nights into it. You know, everyone's, you know, you feel each other out and everything like that. But For sure, I, yeah. I, I've really enjoyed having you guys on and sharing a couple of drinks. Speaking of, yeah, let's crack a beer. Sounds great. I have a show later, but, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it happens. <laughs> <Should be laughs> Cheers, fine. man. So while we're having this drink, and since we often talk about drinks on this on this uh, podcast, mm -hmm. what's your drink of choice? That's like the hardest question. It's always <laughs> flip-flopping because I kind of love everything. Ah, um, just like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fine line. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a hobby at the moment. It hasn't gone too far yet. But okay, good. Yeah. I think if I'm going to like... If I'm gonna have like a drink to sit and enjoy, probably like an old fashioned, like okay. cocktails, like a classic choice. Um, I like a good tequila as well, like a Patron or something. Okay. Yeah. Wait, did you just say Patron is a good tequila? I like it. Okay. Is that controversial? We're gonna have to get you some tequila. But I got I got my man uh, Raf over here, like the king of tequila on tours. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all the days off, he brings all the all the really good stuff. You'll have to show me the ropes. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to remedy that. Maybe yeah. maybe even tonight. We'll see. Okay. That sounds fun. <laughs> I know I got oh, yeah. an early flight tomorrow though. We'll see. We'll see. But um, yeah. So when you're growing up in 
uh, Tasmania, Australia. Yep. I mean, how old are you right now? Uh, 22, almost 23. Okay, like so you just, you just started your drinking career, correct? Uh, in Australia, it's 18, so oh, okay, it's been so a minute for me. It's been a minute, been yeah, a minute. Yeah. Okay, okay. Le legally, 18. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure you waited until you were 18 yeah, like a good boy. definitely. <laughs> like, like everyone else over there. Everyone waits. <laughs> no one waits anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. So it's it, it, the reason why I bring that up, uh, Tasmania and your age and stuff is just, mm -hmm. it's curious um, to me, your alcohol choices too. Like, yeah. Do you get Patron out there pretty easily? Uh, no, it's like pretty expensive over there. Mm -hmm. Like, well, for me anyway. Um, it's like alcohol is super expensive in Australia compared to the US because it's highly taxed. Ah, uh, um, that makes sense. It's like $100 a bottle for Patron over there. So What is it here? I don't even know anymore. I, so I, I can't remember the last time I bought a bottle of Patron. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm guessing nowhere near as much. And then I get, I, and I, I have to backtrack here a little bit. I didn't mean to insult your taste. On no, Patron. no, you're fine. And now that I think about it, now that I know your age, yeah, makes oh, sense. I, I drank Patron like crazy <laughs> yeah. when I was 23. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was going to the bars every night, buying everyone rounds of shots. It was all Patron, chilled Patron. Yeah. Me and the wife. It's just classic. You know? Yeah, it is a classic. <laughs> it, it is a classic. Sorry, Patron, if you still want to sponsor us after that, <laughs> we're we're ready for you. It's for the people. <laughs> it's for the people. Yeah, man. So, again, first time touring, you guys are on a bus. I I I also have to ask about. Uh, the first couple shows, you guys didn't even have merch out there, right? Yeah, it was it was really hard to navigate working that out. I forget exactly what happened. I was a bit out of the loop for that, but um, I think it was stuff to do with shipping or something that mm. it just didn't quite line up. But thankfully, on this leg, we haven't missed a show. I don't think yet with merch, and it's been mm. everyone's been getting it. It's been going really well. So. Good, good. And then you're, how's the uh, the return? How's everyone liking yeah, it? Yeah, I there? think everyone's loving it. Yeah, it's good. selling like really really well like better than we expected um i love seeing all the fans wearing it when we're playing i always notice you know yeah it's it's fun. a really good feeling seeing yeah, that man so, so yeah. again and being on the first tour ever you're on your first tour bus i assume then right yep how's that for you wild very wild <laughs> it's great did yeah. they tell you the right way to sleep yes okay thankfully. good just want to make sure <laughs> <laughs> i did my homework as well i watched like like hundreds of those bus tour vlogs on yeah, youtube yeah. so i was like i knew what to expect but yeah it was yeah, it was really cool. I thought it would be a lot more difficult sleeping and I thought it would be weird kind of having everyone in a shared space, but it's just been really fun. We have a really fun crew. Mm -hmm. Everyone's and how really many, how cool. And how many are uh, you guys deep on that one? Uh, it's hard to say exactly. I want to say nine or ten. Nine or ten, yeah. ten of you on that bus? Something like that, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's manageable. Yeah, it's good. I've done a couple some, junk bunks. I've done I've done some somewhere that we filled it all the way. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> yep. That's fun though. I mean, I, I I'm just looking back and curious to see your perspective of it because I have a perspective of the first time I was ever in a tour bus. Yeah. And I think we're about the same age at the time. So okay, like, that's cool. Um, I remember thinking it was the most fancy thing in the world, you know. Yeah. And as I remember it now. That first bus we ever we had to get rid of after like two or three days because it was so old and beat up and it like broke down. Yeah, I think you guys had any something yet? something similar happened on the first leg. Did it? I won't go into it too much, but yeah, <laughs> we had we had a couple issues. A couple you could issues. Say, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Tour tour buses and doing that whole thing is, I don't know, man. When I was when I was your age when we we were we were first touring, it was such a such a fun exciting experience that yeah. like I found it hard to not be on 11 at all time you know yep. like like just, I I, i'd be drinking all the time like yeah. going crazy having so much fun yep. have you been able to find ways to get a balance in there or are you are you pretty much just like i'm gonna party this one <laughs> <laughs> it's hard it's it's really hard finding the balance i'm kind of like i think i'm i'm doing it okay i am pretty much in 11 like you said mm -hmm. 24 7 um but I'm, I'm trying to sort of each day i'm getting a little more chill kind of mm -hmm. getting used to it yeah but definitely having a lot of fun yeah. yeah again so glad you guys are on the tour because uh you know i hadn't heard much i just like would you know management was like hey what do you guys think about kim dracula yeah explained to you guys his uh, vibe a little bit checked it out and i was like yeah that's at least it's, it's different we want different on this yeah, tour you know cool. um and you guys fit the bill for different and then i was so happy when you guys came out and i got to hear the awesome record that you that you put together um, as well as putting on a show like you got I for a band that hasn't 
necessarily toured much or played very many shows you guys have a stage presence thank you which is awesome not a lot of bands kind of find their footing after a while yeah. on that uh, but i think it was really smart to have an idea before you went into it yeah thank you for that yeah that, where does that come from that's all kim really okay. like the the vision for all of that was from them um they told me basically just as energetic as possible on stage while still being out of play mm -hmm. <laughs> um and yeah i'm just trying to lean into that as much as possible um to me, live live performance is all about the exchange of energy from the crowd to the band. Yes. And f like from what I can tell, the more the band puts out, the more we get back. Especially as an opener, a lot of a lot of the people don't know who we are until we play. So I enjoy seeing the the shock on people's faces. You know, when certain sections happen and they kind of start to enjoy the music. They're not kind of like, who are these guys? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to turn the heads first, and then they, they, they turn first, and they go, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then we play a he super heavy section, yeah. and then everyone's like, yeah. Totally. <laughs> it's it's playing, playing back and forth with that audience, yeah. man. And So the imagery, though, that you guys have, mm -hmm. I know, like you said, it mostly I imagine that's Kim, but like, yeah. where did those masks come from the rest of you guys wear? Um, like the idea to wear them or just yeah the, the idea to wear them who yeah. do, did you guys make those did you buy those like yeah we, we did get them online uh, it was i think all, all the videos have like anonymous musicians in them mm -hmm. um because it's kind of like kim dracula right so we're kind of just like henchmen if you will yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. i look at it totally so it's just like anonymous like like could be criminals you know could be wanted who, who knows who we are kind oh, of thing you know i like that yeah i just it like I feel like the masks are kind of intimidating as well. They kind of creep people out. I love like, I'll find someone and just kind of stare at them. It's, it's cool. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I love that, man. Yeah. No, it's great. And it's great imagery, man. And, and it's, it's, it's just so cool. Um, as you're talking about when you're playing these songs live yeah. too, I want to get into the album now because I yeah. do, because I will say when I first heard it, I did the same thing that the audience was doing, yeah. but I had I my imagine. earphones on. I was yeah. at the gym and I went, <laughs> what just happened there yeah okay okay now this to me it's very obvious that your guys's uh musical influence is from everywhere and every yeah. genre and everything definitely i could hear a lot of them i'm sure there's some that i'm not even picking up on yeah um you know i could n just name a few the easiest ones to me that if we weren't telling people at home it's like faith no more meets corn yeah kind of vibe definitely. on the majority of it but then there's there's so much more going on. It's yep. that, that that doesn't do it justice. So instead of just asking the typical question of who your influence is, let's go back a little bit. Where, where, what's your what's your music um, foundation when you're yeah. growing up? I think my mine's pretty different to Kim's. Um, they were kind of more metal focused growing up, and I was kind of more like old school, like classic rock kind of psychedelic rock. Um, but we had a lot of crossover as well. Like my earliest memories, like most of them are just all music related, like cranking music with my parents, like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Silverchair, Nirvana, just like lots of 90s stuff. Nice, nice like heavy, alternative fun, funky grunge, stuff. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Very cool. Um, and then growing up, I kind of started getting into my own, once you hit like, you know, 10, 12, you kind of develop your own taste. And I, I started by like, my first record I ever bought on iTunes was Black Holes and Revelations by Muse. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was a cool memory. That was like, a great record. I remember when that one came out, <laughs> and it's making me feel extremely old that that was the first record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd, I want to say I was like ten when I bought that. Maybe. Oh wow. Yeah. That was a really cool feeling because obviously, my generation doesn't really have the, the hard like physical right buying records as much. So, I mean, and kids these days all have Spotify. So I kind of had the last sort of generation where we could buy stuff i mean you still can but like but everyone no really just does stuff. everyone's yeah. just streaming that and it makes sense i mean yeah i i, I am glad that you went to your first record by and yeah. mentioned that it was on itunes because i yeah because <laughs> you and i have a very different everyone has their first record or yeah. the first the first time they fell in love with music obviously mm -hmm. as musicians we yeah. all do and it's a very special moment like for me it yeah. was like going down to a warehouse and picking up the cd you know yeah you just i'm buying it on iTunes and downloading it. And yeah. now I own this digital artwork. You yeah, know? it was amazing. <laughs> I was like, I just listened to it over and over like every morning. Yeah. Yeah. And then I bought more stuff and then you can see related artists from that through iTunes. It was really cool. Like exploring and, and finding artists and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So then when it comes to 
I mean, that's kind of your backstory of music. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the other bands you you mentioned before that you were in, what kind of mi- were those more? I think you said they were more metal, right? Um, so I the closest I've never been in like an actual metal band. That's more okay. Kim. All, okay. all their bands have like all been just full metal for the most part. Mine was sort of like more like. The heaviest I was in was probably like a punk grunge kind of psychedelic band. I was playing bass, funnily enough. Oh, right. So I can relate to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a lo- load of fun. Um, and then, yeah, sort of alt, alt rock so, kind of so stuff wait, as well. So Kim's your brother, obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, you guys were in separate bands when, when yeah. you guys were growing up? You guys didn't start? You guys haven't been playing Unfortunately for Unfortunately not. That's interesting. Yeah. I would assume like if you guys would have just been making music together since the beginning since you've both loved music you know yeah i mean we we jam at home a lot and stuff but i think like the age difference was a bit like growing up when you're teenagers you know the younger brother's kind of probably a bit young to hang around with metal who's 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 younger i'm younger oh okay i got you i got you so he was he was like oh i don't want the 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 little guy hanging around me (laughs) maybe a little bit yeah (laughs) And I, I was like conscious of that. I was like, I'll just let you do your thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I moved to a different state, and and Kim stayed in Tasmania when I was, I want to say, sixteen. Um, and so yeah, so that's when I had most of my band sort of interactions and stuff was growing up, sixteen onwards. So okay. we actually lived separate. Okay. So, so yeah. okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So obviously, you just touched on it. You guys grew up in Tasmania mm-hmm. together, obviously, until about 16 yeah yeah so um i've never been to tasmania before okay. i've been to australia i've yep. never been to australia i mean i love australia yeah what is tasmania like i know we talked a little bit about the other night over yeah. drinks but the the you know the audience wasn't here yet so it's hard it's hard to summarize it's kind of it's a very unique place i i loved living there um it's it's kind of a really good mixture of like beautiful nature that you like won't see anywhere else Mm. and then there's like a really it's like a kind of smaller city but it's very tight-knit and very artistic um i think it's a it's a little isolated in some ways so i think that's why everyone's very like art focused and creative there which i i really enjoyed yeah yeah but so that's got and and like what's the population like in tasmania it it could be different now but when i moved i think it was about five hundred thousand. Okay, so, so it's, I mean, it's, it's fairly big. small for the size of the for state. For the size, yeah, of the, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, because uh, I don't, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know how big it is. To yeah. be honest, the only thing I know about Tasmania is, is the Tasmanian Devil from yeah. the, the cartoons. That's what most people. <laughs> that's like when they think Tasmania, that's what they think. Yeah, of. yeah. yeah. Or, or like maybe I've seen the real Tasmanian Devil in like doc, like not 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 documentaries, like animal shows, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're very unique. They're cool. Yeah, they, yeah. I, I've seen them in a couple of zoos too. Not that I love zoos, but whatever. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight every fight. You know what I mean? Exactly. I, I get that. <laughs> but yeah. So growing up in Tasmania, you guys get weren't together. When did you get together and start doing Kim Dracula? Then um, it was actually we both moved to the states. Um, well, it was a little bit before that. I think I would. We did like a little bit of writing ideas and some demo stuff. Um, like I would send over. I don't think any of that got on the record, but that was still like. It was worth doing because it kind of helped figure out the dynamic of how to collaborate. And then I uh, engineered on a couple tracks, a um, couple feature tracks. I don't think any of them were on the album. So we started like hanging out more and, you know, I, w- I was flying over and we were collaborating in, in that way. And then when we both moved over, that's when it like really like because, you know, we were the only real people we knew. Mm. So we kind of relied on each other a little bit, I think, or at least me. And you, um, you say when you guys moved into LA, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's when I started doing more writing. Like I just did a bunch of demos and then Kim would come to me and say like, I want a song that's kind of fits this sort of idea and purpose within the album. And so I would like maybe craft a few sections, some ideas, and then we bounce off each other. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's how we got some of the songs on the album together. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So, and real quick, we'll come back to the music, but mm-hmm. I, you, you mentioned that uh, 500,000 was kind of spread out in, yeah, in very, Tasmania. Yeah, very spread out. So coming from that yep. to LA, that is extremely <laughs> congested. Oh, yeah. What kind of uh, uh, culture shock was that for you? It was it was pretty big, to be honest. I mean, I, I kind of expected it because that's what everyone was saying, like, it's going to be completely shocking. Um, it's It's very different. I love LA. It's like, it's chaotic, but in a kind of beautiful way. Mm. There's always something going on. 
everywhere you go. Um, I love living in a high populated area. I kind of, it's just nice knowing there's lots of people around. Mm. Um, and yeah, like I said, like every night you could go to a concert or like see a movie. There's or, definitely, yeah. there's always entertainment in LA. Yeah. And it's the place to be for this industry, you know? It is. And I have to admit it, but a lot of people <laughs> know, know how I feel about LA. Like, yeah. I just, I don't like, I don't like that congestion. Like that's I, fair. I, that's I, fair. You'll see. We'll, we'll hang when we're off tour and stuff. You're only yeah. an hour away from me when I'm in Orange yeah. County. You'll see the difference of it. It's like I love it. I'll go visit it. I wouldn't yeah. want to live in LA. No, I different. can understand that. <laughs> I've, I've only been there for like a year or something, so yeah. I, I can see like having lived near it for most of your life, um, you would get sick of that. Because I'm guessing it's a lot more busy now than it used to be. Oh yeah. Every yeah. well, everything gets. That's just that's just life. Everything just continually gets busier and busier, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just. It's getting there. It's kind of a pain. Mm -hmm. Getting out of there is kind of a pain. So you know, I just don't do it that often. But when I do, I have a blast. I mean, you're right. Yeah. The concerts are there. I'm a big sports fan. I go. I go yeah. to see the Laker games. You know, it's my favorite Definitely. team in the world. You know, and um, every once in a while, my Raiders come through. SoFi. So I'll go. I'll yep. go to SoFi. There'll be a concert at SoFi. A wrestling event. You name it. They're all in LA. Exactly. Everyone comes to LA. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to. You have to travel for it, but. Again, I just when I have like spent living times in there, like when we were recording records back in the day, we would yeah. we would live at like these Oakwood uh, houses. Sick. And uh, it was just the commute, even from the Oakwood house to the studio every day, was just yeah. like I was like this is just this isn't it for me. I'm just not into it. Yeah, I can understand. You kind of have to leave <laughs> like 45 minutes to an hour at to least to go anywhere. To go anywhere. Yeah. To go like three miles. Yeah. <laughs> But you can almost walk as fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do try and walk when I can because kind of that's one benefit of LA is like everything is kind of around. That's true. Yeah, which I, I like. But yeah, the driving, if I get frustrated. Area too. Yeah. You got to find your area because LA yeah, County exactly. is very, there's all sorts of different stuff going on. Yeah, so. 100%. Uh, everyone could probably hear the, in the background too. There's sound checks all going on all and everything right now. So it, it, it's part of it's part of taking drinks with Johnny on the road. You know exactly. <laughs> That's the fun of it. <laughs> so I think we were, we were talking about the congestion and everything. Yeah. You know, the difference coming from Tasmania to LA. I think we covered uh, your 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 feelings on it. Um, let's get back into the into the music when you yeah. guys are getting getting together. Um, one of the things I, I noticed about this album is it has. I don't want to say it, it has like a, a a concept. It's not a concept record, right? But it has a, a theme to it, right? And it, yeah, definitely. And it's narrated, like all the yeah. narrations between it. I mean, some of that stuff. And I'm glad he brought it to the stage too, by the way. Yeah. Like the chainsaw yeah. scene and everything, doing so it live. So much fun. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was, I just want to talk about that a little bit. Like, what what was that vision? What it, what is this vision that is uh, this album? Because again, yeah. the narr the narration the, the uh, theatrics of this record not to mention the music and where, yeah. where it goes um i think yeah i think kim is really the sort of mastermind i guess i'll say behind mm -hmm. all of that stuff um there's definitely like hidden meaning in everything everything's very well planned out as far as i can tell um i don't actually know most of it myself um unfortunately so i can't <laughs> shed too much light on it okay um but yeah like just so people out there know it's like it, everything's for a reason it's right. all like yeah there's lots of thought there's lots of story there's you know there's three acts in the in the album mm -hmm. there's like the one two and three um of all different sort of sequences that go together well to kind of tell a greater story mm -hmm. yeah yeah i noticed that like uh, yeah uh, i even like coming through the 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 voice comes in and says, well, you're halfway through. You might yeah, as well keep going. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I love, I love that yeah. stuff. That's, that's where I get like the, the faith and more Mr. Bungle vibes of it. Too. Yeah, it's definitely. Like, like, it's, it definitely has that like Bungle vibe where you come in and, you know, pilot, yeah. like, come in and say some silly shit in between songs and stuff. I love it. So much fun. Yeah. Um, so let's talk like that. That's like kind of the overarching theme. And mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit more about like your role as, as well in the producer of yeah. this stuff. Um, how are you guys arranging and recording this? Because uh, again, it seems to me like it was, and correct me if I'm wrong here, it was just you two guys working together. Did you record everything together? So, or is there, or do you guys have like, is it, is there a permanent band now? Or what, uh, what, what's the situation there? It's all pretty complicated. So as far as producing goes, um, the main like producer is actually a guy called Wizard Blood who works okay. out of LA. He's doing like loads of huge metal records at the moment. Um, so he's he's actually the the main producer, 
and then um another guy called chris mora as well is he he produced and wrote a lot of the stuff as well and then i i did a couple as well um i think as far as writing goes it's mostly kim um i want to say that that just does everything and then bounces off the producers and, okay. and writers to sort of work together as far as i go um I sort of, yeah, like Kim would come to me with like a purpose for the song and then I would sort of think it through, think how I want it to sound, what kind of instruments maybe, and just like a general feeling I wanted to convey. Um, mostly, oh, it depends on the song. So the intro, for example, that's one I did, A Gradual okay. Decline in Morale. I wanted like a very epic, like gothic sort of cinematic, like intense intro to mm -hmm. really like say a statement. So I... I want to say I'm trying to think how I started that I kind of like try and write it in my head if that makes sense and kind of yeah. arrange it in my head and then I pick it apart and then do one bit at a time and then I'll have one section done kind of craft it out and then I'll I'll try and imagine I'll play it and then imagine where the next section's going to go right um so that's that song and then other songs Rosé was another one I did. Love that song. By oh, the thank way. you. That that thank that you. one I was. It speaks to me. You know, like all that the drinking and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Definitely. I was like, yeah, I, I I get this vibe. I get this vibe. Yeah. So that that one was like really fun. I just nonstop wrote for like two days, um, and I I found the verses and stuff pretty, like they kind of just flowed out, and then the chorus I was really struggling on, because I was trying to make this one like really musical and. And like weird chord progressions and and like key changes and stuff yeah. all throughout, and so I think I was trying to like make the chorus too complicated. I was kind of overcooking it, and I was just over and over trying different stuff, and I just couldn't get anything. And then I just like took I went on a massive walk and just kind of cleared my head, came back, and I think it's like two chords. Mm. I just did two chords, and I was like, okay, that's it, it's perfect. That's that's, <laughs> what, that's, that's what it needed. Yeah. Before we go further into yeah. into this thing, though, as you're talking, I, I, I realized I hadn't really asked where you're in your musical background. Or mm -hmm. When you start playing, did did you take lessons? Did you did you like what, what yeah. was your journey with the with becoming a musician? I guess. Yeah. So it's pretty. There's a lot of different ways to look at it, I guess. So I kind of we always had like guitars and stuff laying around mm -hmm. since I was born, really. So I'd always grow up kind of just messing around, I, I could say. And then I think I was 11 or 12 and my mom was like, you got to get guitar lessons, like just do it. You're going to have so much fun. I did that for, I think like two or three years maybe. And then that I like learned a lot from that. That was really good. And then- did you, did, Were you learning, not just able to play, but learning theory in this as well? Um. Or did that come later? Because it's yeah, the kind way you're describing later. the way yeah. that you write and stuff. I, I feel like you have some music theory background. Yeah, a little bit. I, I went to a conservatorium. That that's later on of music for a couple of years. I ended up dropping out, but okay. I learned I learned while I was there some theory stuff. But I think it was it wasn't so much theory. It was kind of just like how the guitar works, okay. kind of theory. Like I didn't have the names or like the reasons why, but I kind of figured out how the guitar works and how you can use it if that makes sense yeah and then i ended up kind of being self-taught for the most part um on youtube as well you can learn so much dude it's amazing yeah this is another part of the generation yeah thing. Like, <laughs> i'm i'm I, so I, I remember <laughs> tablature and, I, and it was all wrong <laughs> yeah oh no I've, I've definitely experienced that don't worry yeah <laughs> yeah you get it close and you're like oh i can play it then like you play it and you're like yeah why does it sound like that it's like and then you once you actually develop an ear as yeah. a musician, you're like, oh, because it's wrong. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I've definitely experienced that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fun. No, everything's on YouTube. I mean, I use it for, I don't use it for music, uh, but I definitely use it for fixing shit around the house. So <laughs> something goes down, I'm like, yeah, I use it for ah, everything. I gotta, I gotta figure out how to fix this real yeah. quick. <laughs> it's yeah, it's the best, yeah. honestly. So so good to have that. Yeah. But okay, back to the back to the record. So yep. when you say you're you guys are recording, you're recording with a what was his name? Wizard. Wizard Blood. Wizard Blood. Yep. Yes. Um, again, how is that? Uh, how do you guys bring in the musicians for that for you and Kim to to, to work with? Yep. Or are you recording? Because you did before we hit record, or maybe yeah. No, no, we we had already been recording. Yeah. Getting a little convoluted <laughs> here. 
Uh, you said you played bass for for a minute too. So yeah, yeah. Are you are you recording all the uh, string instruments? For yeah. This? So the ones I did is all me. I um is it was all yeah all guitar and then all MIDI keyboard stuff. So I had like strings, keyboards, uh, organ, all all kinds of stuff like available like VSTs and stuff that I use. Uh-huh. Very cool. Very cool. yeah. I was curious because like when I hear it too, like especially those going back to the bass like mm-hmm. there's like those, those funky parts that come in yeah it was that was that you playing those uh n- i think that was chris i want to okay. say yeah okay. yeah he's he's crazy he's dude so it talented. sounds so yeah, good it's, it's amazing I was like so because the first time it happens is right after that epic intro yeah that you had, yeah it's like the it's first a crazy time transition like, <laughs> that was one of those first times where i went hmm yeah i like this <laughs> cool cool that's cool and then you go into like a little bit of pop yeah and then it's I mean, guys, if you haven't already checked out this record, go check out the new Kim Dracula record. Uh, I'll just say it while we're still chatting here, but because I'm a big fan. I'm a, Thank I'm you. a big fan of this Thanks record. A lot. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask about on this is uh, you guys got to work with uh, Jonathan Davis of Korn yep. uh, for a song. How did that come together, and what was that experience like for you guys? Yeah, I, I think – I don't know exactly everything, but I think uh, they met sort of on Instagram um, mutually. Um, obviously, Kim's like – a huge corn fan growing up and i am too mm-hmm. um and yeah i think they just sort of had interest in each other's music and then decided to collaborate i i found out after it after it had already been written and when i heard it, i was like mind blown i was like there's yeah. no way this is happening I'm so psyched <laughs> and then yeah shooting the video i got to meet jonathan and he's like he's lovely he's awesome yeah. Nice um and yeah that was another dream come true yeah. it, was, it was amazing so another thing that that just makes me think about that when you're uh shooting the video you said um what's your label again i looked on it and i uh, was columbia you're on columbia yeah okay because there was a copyright for something else on on itunes when i looked at it oh okay okay so you guys are you guys did sign to columbia congratulations yeah, on that thank so you. that's really cool um is that obviously your first debut album and everything like that? You already said you have been touring, so that was must have been your first video shoot or, or yeah, pretty, pretty much. Oh, uh, like first like of of that high level like mm. crazy set stuff. Like I was mind blowing as well. <laughs> what, what kind of a blur of a day was that for you? It was pretty huge. The first one was Make Me Famous that mm-hmm. I was in, um, and yeah, it was a whole nother level of like design and just everything and spectacle. Um, it was a pretty big day. We got there super early and just shot like, I think we did um, the band stuff because obviously there's a lot of other stuff in that video. The band right. stuff at least was the better part of a day just over and over like shooting as much as we could. Mm-hmm. Um, it was yeah amazing experience just seeing like all the cameras and, and all the crew. Yeah, those awesome. crews are amazing, aren't they? Yeah, they work so hard. Yeah, it's man. amazing. It's, 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 it's wild to see every time and then for uh, for me it's always there's always those parts of the day that where it's like hurry up and wait and they're like okay we're gonna need you in five minutes yeah and it's like <laughs> an hour goes by because there's there, it's for something obvious happens. reasons something yeah, happened yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like it was like man i gotta sit here again a little bit yeah. longer yeah you gotta respect more beers. for that yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly man so i guess we could kind of come to an end of this because i know we, we got sound checks we yeah. got a bunch of stuff to do but i do want to talk a little bit more uh, we'll have you back again when when we're all done awesome. on this tour. We'll Sounds come, good. I'd love to have the rest of the guys too. Just everybody who, 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 who would, would want to be on can come over to the house, have some real, have some proper drinks, and uh, okay. maybe record it. Maybe not. But yeah, um, it's October, man. It's Halloween. I know. Before the cameras rolled, you yeah. said that. Tasmania does not celebrate Halloween. Yeah, not like America. <laughs> not like America. <laughs> well, how do they? Um, it'll be like. Yeah, most people don't like some people will go around trick or treating like some it depends kind of where you're at mm-hmm. like some areas where it's more like suburbia certain streets will like you'll see a few houses decorating and some people going around in costumes and stuff um where i lived i never really saw that unfortunately i heard mm-hmm. about it and stuff and then growing up halloween was more so costume parties and dressing up going out and, and stuff like that which i loved yeah that's like loads of fun um, but yeah, I'm, lo- I'm really looking forward to my first U.S. Halloween. Like, and this, I feel this, like this it's going to be. Up, we'll yeah, be. yeah, it's the first one coming up. <sighs> I have to. Well, I'm not doing my Halloween party this year. Otherwise, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. I uh, for many years we do a big Halloween party at my house. Yeah. It's kind of like my wife's uh, uh, brainchild when we first got our when we first bought a house years yeah. ago. Yeah. 
and then you know there's been some hit or miss years i guess over the over the time so it's yeah. been like ah oh, man like <laughs> yeah it's a lot like, to pull off probably yeah there's yeah. you know there were covid we didn't do it during then yeah when she was pregnant she didn't want to have a party then you yeah. know <laughs> it was like so there's been some missed years and now she's we're just not feeling it this year yeah that's as fair. far as the party goes but we're all excited for halloween yeah i'm, I'm still I'm decorating still excited. doing all that yeah the next time i do have a party though you'll you guys will get the invite for sure sounds amazing yeah looking forward to it halloween is is probably my favorite holiday yeah of that's all cool. of them um i love dressing up i love yeah, a good too. excuse to have some drinks as an adult yeah amazing I'm, I'm sorry for you that you don't have like kid memories of, of Halloween. <laughs> that was the best like dressing up like my favorite heroes and going yeah and getting candy yeah all your friends just running around in the street like man that was that's that's what it's all about yeah it sounds like a lot of fun i grew up seeing it in movies mm -hmm. so i can kind of imagine yeah how awesome i mean the be. movies were, were very accurate okay <laughs> that's cool <laughs> that's, i'm looking forward to I would, it <laughs> I would say i would say that i mean i mean once you like throw on a costume you could still go trick-or-treat you're not too old Maybe if I shave, maybe <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, maybe man. if I hunch over a little bit, yeah, look just, like a kid. <laughs> just gotta find the right costume. Yeah. Um, but speaking of the, on the on the spooky season that it is, uh, we talked a little bit. I know you're a bit of a horror horror movie Most fan. Most definitely. So, uh, are you are you starting to to watch those movies? The yeah, I'm getting this, getting year round. I watch them, but um, seeing as it's Halloween, I might watch a little more. Right. But yeah, I've been watching them on tour as well. I watched Hellraiser the other night, which is pretty cool. Uh, which one? The first one? Just the first one. Oh, I've yeah. never seen it. you never seen the never. first Hellraiser? Yeah. Oh, dude. It was cool. That's a creepy one. Yeah. <laughs> that one's creepy as fuck to me. I love that one. Yeah, now. it's crazy. I really want to watch the second one. Probably watch it in a few days. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all of them are great. And then, like, I can't remember which Hellraiser it was, but, like, Pin... It's the same thing with like uh, you know Freddy Krueger stuff. Like yeah. I, after a while, it starts they start to put a little comedy in it, <laughs> yeah. which I love. By the way, I love I it's a perfect it. combination. Yeah. yeah, like there was like a DJ that gets killed by Pinhead with yeah. like CDs in his face and shit. <laughs> it was That's amazing. Awesome. Um, so Hellraiser is one. What what are some of your favorites though that you just watched out for the first time? What yeah. are some of your favorites? Um, I think The Conjuring when that came out, I was like fairly young, and that was like I'd never seen anything like that. So brilliant movie um mm -hmm. and the soundtrack is crazy as well i think uh it's the uh what's it called uh, i'm trying to think of the name insidious oh the insidious, insidious movies, movies are really are great good. those are great yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um halloween ones. is a classic as well like that mm -hmm. soundtrack is amazing as well yeah. jim carpenter yep so good um, it's crazy say I, I i i love insidious yeah all of, i love hellraiser so those those two you got me on like all the all the movies Halloween, everything is like a little bit more old school for me. I haven't seen any like yeah. great horror movies maybe since like House of a Thousand Corpses. I haven't seen that. You haven't I need, seen I need to watch that. Yeah. Really oh, you definitely that. need that. Yeah. That and Devil's Rejects. Devil's Rejects was a little dirtier, it w but it was still good. Is that not as good as Hell Rob House. Zombie? Yeah. It's yeah. Zombies. Yeah. Yeah. His movies are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Great movies. Uh, but I, yeah, you you have homework now. Yeah, you're gonna have to go. Watch I'll, I'll send you some new stuff as well. You can check please, out. Please, please yeah. do because there's. I know that I need to watch Terrifier. I've heard from m multiple sources. Yeah, me now. too. I haven't seen that, but from what I've heard, it's yeah, insane. Yeah, I don't know yeah. why I haven't seen it yet. I have no excuses. I haven't even <laughs> seen the first one yet. I, I don't know. It's, I'm sorry, guys. I'll, I'll watch it. I promise. Um, check it out. But yeah, man, just horror movies. You know, Halloween. It's just a great time time of the year. Sports. Yeah. October is probably my favorite month of the year. It's got sports too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you're, I'm you're I'm Australia. not the biggest not, sports fan, but no? I, I can appreciate it. Okay. I like rugby. I like watching rugby. I I've only watched rugby a little bit. My nephew plays rugby. Oh cool. Um, I've watched it a little bit. I think it's a rad sport. I yeah. don't fully get it yet. I, I'm the same with American football. I yeah. can appreciate it, but I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> well, when we get off tour, yep. They're it, not football. Uh, but the Lakers will be starting their season in LA. That sounds like a lot of fun. I yeah. think you and I should go to a Lakers game. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I think, I th I think we're gonna have to make that happen. Fuck yeah, <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> now I'll teach you the ropes, and you'll you'll be you'll be in good hands because you'll be rooting for the best team. LA, you know, you know the yeah. purple and gold, most championships, or they're tied for the Celtics. But to be honest, the Celtics, you want them half years before the NBA was even formed. That's bullshit. <laughs> Anyways. I love fucking with Celtics fans, yeah. by the way. 
It's a big rivalry. Boston oh, okay. and LA. Right, right, it's right. Big rivalry. It all happened in the eighties. I'll fill you in another time. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds like a lot of law. <laughs> it is, man, it is. So um well, and where, where can like everyone at home find you on social media and stuff? Like, you uh, on Instagram, tag? it's probably the best place. And what's uh, the, the It's tag? just Prod Wellen. Prod Wellen. Short and simple, Everyone yeah. go check that <laughs> out. Everyone go check out Kim Dracula on tour with my band, Avenge Sevenfold, right now. Great album out. Go check that out, too. It's going to blow your mind if you, you know, you listen to it, and it's just all over the place in such a beautiful way. Thank you. And brought together. Like, it's not just for the sake. This is the problem I have sometimes when people – or bands or artists just go all out for no re- just to do it and yeah. it's like well you gotta have a purpose for it like the music can't just be off the wall for no reason yeah. you gotta have like like we were talking before kim has, uh kim seems to have the uh the ideology behind it already yeah, figured out definitely, that, yeah. that's how it's supposed to be done I'm really happy you guys Thank are you. here you're on the show you're touring with us because i know this is your first record. I can only imagine where the <laughs> hell the rest of this career is going to go. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking I, forward to it. You remember us little people when you get up there, right? I'll definitely never forget you guys. Don't <laughs> worry about that. <laughs> Thank you, never. man. Thank Appreciate you. you. It's been great. Thanks, to everybody, for checking it out. Next time, as always, cheers. Cheers.